Hey besties, welcome to our time-lapse video of our final drive gearing swap. We are working on our transmission for the rally car, the Unicarn, which has the transmission from a 97 Subaru Impreza. The first thing we had to do was clean up the transmission. We did not want any dirt or grime getting inside. We used simple Dawn dish soap and water with scrubbing brushes. Once it was all clean, we let it dry overnight. Now let's take it apart. First, we remove the bolts holding the center differential case in place. We had to use a rubber mallet and a torch, but we were able to get enough gap to pry the differential case from the transfer case. We removed the center differential before we moved on to dismantling the transfer case. The short bolts came out easily. The two long bolts were a struggle. We had to use a torch and some serious elbow grease to get them out. The shift linkage is inside the transfer case. There's a small set screw to remove the shift linkage that through the trial and error we figured out was under the cover on top of the transfer case. Once the transfer case is removed we can see the back of the pinion gear. We remove a spacer located between the pinion and the case and there were four more bolts holding the pinion. We were almost ready to crack the case. We stood the transmission on end and began to loosen the 18 bolts holding it together. We had to do this with opposite corners to make sure that we didn't tweak anything. We then removed the bolts in a similar fashion to how we loosened them. We laid the transmission back down on its side as we were ready to pull it apart. We figured out that we should have laid it on the other side because it would have made things easier later on. It wasn't a huge issue though. Here we see the ring, front differential, and the individual gear sets. We removed the front differential from the case and set it aside on another table and covered it to make sure it stayed clean. We took the pinion out, which comes with first, third, fifth, and reverse attached. 
We put the new pinion side by side so we could see how it was assembled. We were not sure, but it looked like you could remove the pinion and the gears would stay put. After some careful decision making, we decided we needed to use the vise to get this thing apart. We utilized some wood to help soften the jaws on the vise and prop the back of the shaft. This was strictly to loosen the nut. Once the nut was loose, we could remove the two splines and five rings on the back end. The pinion slid out without any issue. However, on the front, near the gear end of the pinion, there was a bearing that is well seated. We had to move that over to the vise again and get some leverage. We utilized a little heat to get the bearing to expand a little. It took some figuring, but with a couple screwdrivers, we were able to loosen the, and remove the bearing. It was time to begin the reassembly of the pinion. We had to reseat the bearing on the new shaft. Utilizing a brass punch and some gentle taps, we were able to get it seated properly. The pinion slid back into the gear set with ease. We then had to put the splines and the rings on the back of the pinion and set it all with the nut. We had to make sure it would spin freely but not bind. We went back to the vise to hold the differential in place and remove the 390 ring from the differential. We utilized an electric impact wrench to remove the bolts around the ring. This part was relatively simple. We then put the new ring on to the diff and reset the screws. We utilized a torque wrench to make sure they were seated to the proper PSI. It's time to begin reassembling the transmission. We began by cleaning the seal surface around the transmission case, utilizing razor blades. Once the seal area of the case was clean, we wiped out the case to catch any debris. We replaced the axle seals as well. We used some different pushers and a hammer to set the seal into place. With the seal replaced, it was time to put the front differential back in. We put the pinion and the gear set back in place next. There were pins on the case and holes in the bearings. These had to line up to ensure proper placement. Next, we made sure that the shims in the back were in the correct position and not getting tweaked. It was time to put in the other gear set with the input shaft, which also had pins to line up with the bearings. Next, we had to replace the speedometer gear so that the car would register the correct speed. The gear was the last one in the country, it was at a dealership in Rhode Island. We did manage to get our hands on it though. We replaced the axle seal on this side as well, and then we set the backlash for the differential. We also removed the sundial and cleaned it up. Next, we checked the fit of the two sides of the case. We found that the input shaft needed an adjustment, and after that, things fit together nicely. We were ready to apply the sealant to the case. It wasn't overly difficult to apply, it was just a little time consuming. With the sealant fully applied, it was time to put the case back together. We utilized a rubber mallet to get the pins to seat. We began putting bolts back into place. These were never seized to make sure that we could get it apart again in the future. We also had to make sure we reapplied all of the brackets in the proper places. This is to make sure that the wires can be run properly for reconnection to the engine.
We snugged up all the bolts with a standard ratchet, and then we used a torque wrench to set the screws to the specified range. We had to do this in the proper order, there were 18 bolts. The transfer case needed to have the shift linkage reconnected, and also we needed to reprep the surfaces for reassembly. We placed the new gasket, and oddly this was the only section of the transmission that utilized a manufactured gasket. Every other section we had to use the gasket sealant. The transfer case seated relatively easily. We then got ready to replace the bolts. There were quite a few of these that were pretty stubborn coming out. Similar to the main case, we had to torque everything to spec. We then made a gasket for the center differential with the red goo. We had to make sure the output shaft and center differential were seated correctly. This would allow the case to seat down the way that it should. We then put the shift position sensors back in and re-ran the cords up to the front of the transmission. And lastly, we reconnected the clutch lever and retainer. Ta-da! Here it is all back together. We are excited for the 2022 season. With our new gearing, we are hoping to be more competitive. Hey everyone, Edward Best here, owner and driver for Best Rally Team. Thank you for watching. Uh, in fact, if you've made it this far, that means you watched the whole video and that makes you extra awesome. Uh, for more rally-inspired content and sim rally-inspired content, please like and subscribe. And please check out our team on Facebook and Instagram, at Best Rally Team. For merchandise like this, and like this, you can get it printed on basically everything. There's a link down below in the description. It takes you right to Redbubble. Thanks again, and we'll catch you next time.